crows can share ideas. Chimps can share ideas. We actually know that baby chimps will watch their mums while they're termiting. What the mums do is they, they grab a stick and they remove all the leaves and they put the stick into a termite mound and they wait until the termites glom onto it. Then they pull it out quickly. They remove all the termites. They put them in their mouths. They chomp down on them quickly before they can bite and voila, a tasty termite snack. And then the baby chimps just do what their mums have done. So this is not a bad way of learning. But could you teach someone to build a car like this? Or build a nuclear power station? I don't think so. It's actually quite a slow way of learning. And that's why chimps don't really have a, have a history, while well, human beings do. What's the difference? We have a form of language so powerful that we can share huge amounts of ideas very efficiently all the time. For example, why just eat the termites? Why not roast them or add honey to them? We can constantly add new ideas so that human knowledge builds up from generation to generation, becomes more and more powerful, and this is what we call collective learning. To get a sense of how powerful this is, think of your own ideas during a single day. How many ideas you have, how many conversations, how many tweets, how many Facebook entries. And then think of a whole city, millions of people doing the same thing, sharing ideas, adding new ideas. And then think of the world as a whole today with the internet. Seven billion people sharing ideas potentially instantaneously around the world and adding new ideas. This is very powerful indeed. This is collective learning on a planetary scale. So what ideas are you going to contribute to human knowledge?